morning. So today the first of the baby rescue mice start to go to their new homes and this time feels a lot more bittersweet than usual because I've had them for a lot longer and I've watched them grow up but they are so so ready to go to new homes. Apologies if you can hear one of the boys running on a very very squeaky wheel in the background but I'm so so ready for them to go as much as it's going to be emotional. They're going through so much food and trying to handle and socialise 24 individual mice just by myself is definitely a challenge so they are definitely ready to go to new homes and be socialised and have much more one-on-one -on -one attention. I am so excited for them so the first of the girls to go in a trio is Phoebe, Thea and Cleo. Cleo the trio. Um, and this time feels a lot more bittersweet because Phoebe was one of the mice I was tempted to keep. If I was going to keep any girls, I was just drawn to her, so I'm really excited for them, but also going to be sad to see them go too. But yeah, all of the first two litters are now eight weeks old and ready to go to their new homes. Besides the males, of course, that have to wait to be neutered, but having to separate all the males, it is like mouse Jenga in here, trying to put the cages somewhere because a lot of them can't be in barred cages, they're just a bit too small still that they're gonna slip through the bars. So a lot of bin cages and temporary setups that you can't really stack on top of each other. So bit of a logistical nightmare trying to fit everyone in, but we're making it work and I'm just really excited for some of them to go to new homes. So we're gonna have to set up a carrier, put some of their existing nest material into here, give them a water source, and then we'll hit the road and be on our way to taking them to their new home. So I just got back and their new owner has sent us away with a bunch of different things for the mice, I think mostly the rescue mice, but also for my mice as well. But because there are so many rescue mice, I think they are gonna end up with most of this at the moment. And we've got some treats, a foraging toy, a bunch of different sprays, different types of millet, a sunflower head and a coconut. Thank you so much for sending this. I'll put the link to their website in the description. This is their Instagram handle, just in case you want to follow up on the girls. I'm sure they're gonna take some very, very cute pictures of them and I'm very excited to see them. And then this is their website. Just in case you want to get any sprays for your mice or your hamsters, you can actually select which type you want. I can't remember half the names of these, but they did come packaged with the names on which I probably should have kept because Half of this, I'm not even really sure what it is, but thank you so much. Okay, so let me just turn off the air purifier because it's really starting to smell with all of the male mice in here. But we've got the next group of female mice off to their forever homes. We've got Hera, who is one of the mums, and then her two daughters, Hestia and Athena. They look so, so cute together as a group, and they're joining other mice in their new home. So I've got them in the carrier. They're going to be collected, but I'm just going to take them downstairs in this and then transfer them and some of their old bedding over.
Okay, so my task for today is weighing all of the male mites, just to check their weather should be. To have mice neutered, you want them to roughly be at least three months old, and also weighing around 30 grams plus, so I'm just doing this to see where they're at. They have still got a couple of weeks to go until the first lot of boys have their surgery, so just to see how they're doing and if they're on the right track to weighing at least 30 grams. Okay, so I've got my scales, and then you can also just use a carrier to hold the mice and then zero this. I've just got an empty mealworm tub. I've poured all of the mealworms out just to use this, so this should hopefully contain them. We'll see. <laughs> First up, we have got the man, the myth, the legend, Hector. He is the oldest, so you'd expect him to weigh the most, but it doesn't always work that way. 31 grams, just over 30. I think that's a pass, mister. <laughs> then we've got my little man Sphinx. Would help if I turned it on. <laughs> you are... 31 grams, yay! I thought your lack of hair might let you down, but nope, you're good. Come on, feral bean. Then we've got Mr. Percy. He is one of the prettiest mice I've ever seen, and the camera does not pick it up, but... You are a big boy, I can tell. 32 grams, well done. Going out. Good boy. Then we have got Pontus, who I adore. 31 grams. You look tiny, but you're not. You look tiny. And then we have Griffin, my boy, who has been on my back this entire time. He is honestly such a good mouse. And the idea of him going through surgery is really stressing me out, but let's see. Let go, buddy. I know, I know. He's obsessed. Let go. 31. Yay. So we've got Apollo. And he is 33 grams. Yay, good boy. You are a big boy. And then Atlas. In you get, buddy. 37 grams. Oh my gosh, you are a big boy. You're huge, and you're the youngest. Hades. He's in a tube for a reason, because he likes to escape. 33 grams, good boy. So I'm happy with all of those weights. They do still have a couple more weeks to gain a few more grams if they want to. It is really strange the last three boys are a month younger than everyone else, but they weigh more. I think that's been the case with all of the mice in the litters. The last litter I had, even the girls were like double the size of the other girls that were older, so it's been very interesting. They've come out completely different and they weigh a lot more. Just by looking at them, you can see they're bigger, so has been very interesting to see the results on the scales, but everyone is above 30 grams, which is the main thing. change of plans. I've had the mice booked in to be neutered pretty much since they were born because I knew there was going to be a bit of a backlog and I've had the appointment for a good couple of months and it's also partly my fault. I also didn't realise they were booked in on a bank holiday on a good Friday before Easter and the vet isn't actually open so they've had to cancel my appointment and they wouldn't be able to get them all in again for at least another two months or so which is just too long to have these mice waiting. They need to go to good homes. They've got the homes all waiting and I don't want them living alone for any longer than they have to be. The other option was to take them one by one to the vets to have them done over a couple of weeks. And it's not the most local vets to me. It's about 40 minutes there and back. So doing that for eight mice, eight times, I think it'd be about 10, 
hours of driving which is just so much so instead we are now driving them three hours doing a round trip to Cheshire instead to borrow Backer's residence and other rescues but so I can luckily get us in pretty quickly so it's gonna be a lot taking them there back and forth staying overnight waiting for their appointment but it's the best option we've got given the circumstances so it's gonna be a road trip with the mice and I will bring you guys along. So here's all of the older boys. I've got them all stacked up. In this one we've got Pontus, who is like a fuzzy, he's not really hairless anymore, he's a fuzzy mouse. And he's probably hiding somewhere. And then next door to him, we have got Perseus, but I just start calling him Percy. Percy! He's usually up in that hammock. I know it's Halloween themed, but for him it's Halloween all year round. He loves that, he's always in that, but I think he is in there at the moment. So some of them have drawn the short straw and do have slightly smaller enclosures, but I do have double trouble here that are in Alaska's. We have got my boy Sphinx, who is in this one. It's gonna be pretty dark because they are all stacked up, but I think he is hiding in there somewhere. They're all very quick and very flighty, so you're not gonna see much of them until we get to Griffin, um, but he lives in this and then <laughs> on the bottom we have got Mr Hector who is a huge troublemaker wants to escape all the time don't you bud you are very naughty but yeah those are the boys currently in this room and obviously we need to transport them all the way to Cheshire to the vets it's about two and a half hours three hours sometimes and their appointment is eight in the morning so we are having to drop them off and stay overnight and I was just going to leave them in their carriers, ready to go to the vets in the morning, but a certain someone, I put them all into carriers to clean them, and whilst I was doing that, he tried to make his escape, so don't think I'm going to be leaving them in carriers, because otherwise, he's definitely going to do this overnight, and these mice are just insane. I've never had mice that want to try to escape and do things I shouldn't do as much as these mice. And also the girls that were like this too so I'm having to take some cages so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these two boys in their bin cages and then these two and Griffin I'm gonna put them into slightly smaller cages well a lot smaller cages that I had every intention of throwing away they just came with the mice when I rescued them and they are definitely not suitable so I just haven't got around to throwing them away but it's going to come in quite handy because I can just use those to transport them, they can be in them whilst they recover, and then go back into these setups. So that's going to save a lot more space. I don't think more than one of these would fit in our car, so it's going to be mouse Tetris. Um, things are nice and calm right now, but not sure how much I'll film in the morning. I'm probably going to be quite stressed trying to remember everything, food, water all of the mice trying to fit them into the car so I will see you tomorrow when we are on our way to Chester and the vets. And then we also have my other boy Griffin who lives in here. He's very very friendly and that's the five boys that are getting neutered on Monday. All of the older boys from the older litters and then we do also have the younger boys that I will show you now. And then we have the younger boys, they are not getting neutered this time around just because he can only fit five mice in a day to neuter so as soon as they can get neutered they are going to be but I obviously have to take them there ready to be neutered so obviously I can't take a whole exoterra in my car so I'm going to have to put them into a slightly different temporary setup just to transport them and then we've got all of the carrier set up for the five boys that are going to be neutered on that day so I've put all of their names on top of the carriers and just a description of what they look like and their personalities because some of them will be running around the vets if they're not careful so I just thought that might be helpful to them and just to identify them just in case anything goes wrong I can know which ones it's happened to try not to think about those kind of things but we've got the younger boys in this and this and then you probably aren't gonna okay wow <laughs> We have light, there you go. So obviously some of these enclosures are not good enough 
long term for any mice to live in, even single male mice, so I think that's also why I was quite upset that their appointment got cancelled and delayed, because I don't want them living in below minimum conditions any longer than they have to, obviously on a temporary basis, it is okay, most rescues tend to do this when they have a bajillion male mice coming in, but I think I've done the best I can to put them into the biggest enclosures I've got and try to make it as enriching for them. They've got a bunch of bedding, sprays and stuff, but what I need to do with these younger boys is set up some temporary enclosures for them just to transport them and also just to have them at the other rescue temporary until they can be either put into other enclosures or neutered, um, obviously because it can't be done on the same day. So what I've got to transport them in are these, I think they're called, oops, I think they're called mini dunas and I don't really like these even just short term for anything because they are really, really small and you can't attach a water bottle or anything so not the biggest fan of these. I don't think I will use them even short term going forward if I can help it. I've just got them solely for the purpose of transporting these mice so need to set those up temporarily. So here's a closer look at all of the carriers. We've got Sphinx, we've got Pontus. I've tried to describe them in ways that will make sense to the vets that aren't quite familiar with varieties, but I put Texel by accident, so hopefully they know what that means and they can tell them apart when they're operating and then putting them back into the carriers. We've got Hector and then we've got Griffin and I just put that he is a good boy just in case anyone does want to hold them and cuddle with the mice. Griffin is the one to do it with. The rest of them will probably escape and run away, so you don't fit down there. <laughs> Apollo, you're gonna squish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude. So as with any neuter, whether it's a rat neuter or a mouse neuter, you want to have a really surgery friendly bedding for them to be on afterwards. So this is back to nature pellets. I don't usually recommend using this with mice because they can't dig and make burrows, but this is really suture and surgery friendly on their wounds and stuff afterwards. It's not pokey, it's not sharp like shavings, so that's a good option. And I've just given them some nesting material because they are going to want to hide, they're going to feel quite scared afterwards, so they've all got a bit of nesting material. In this I've just used... Is it tea bag bedding? I think it is. I've got a big, big bale. Thank you so much to Pontus' owner for sending that to us because we are working our way through that quite a lot. So I am back. I am mouseless, besides my mice, of course. Things didn't go to plan. These mice, I swear, are doomed when it comes to being neutered. Um, totally not anyone's fault. What happened was, basically, they went in, they went into the vets to be neutered, and they had a bunch of emergencies come in, which is totally understandable, but we were already on our way driving home and then getting ready to pick them up, and unfortunately, none of them got neutered, so I had to make, like, a split-second decision. Obviously, we'd already stayed overnight in a hotel to get them there, I've got my own animals back home, they were waiting for me to come home and feed them and I couldn't just stay with the mice. I also couldn't take them back the next week because they wouldn't fit into my tiny smart car that actually isn't even starting at the moment, I don't have a car myself so I couldn't take them back the next week because my boyfriend had already taken time off work to take them and drive to Cheshire so relying on him for the car, he can't just not go to work and then take them back the next week when they can have their next appointment so had to make a split second decision and leave them with the other rescue which they are completely fine about none of us really had much of a choice of what to do but they are completely fine to look after them um but i still felt really bad i had obviously taken them in smaller travel cages and they've now got to look after them for a week and then figure out how i'm going to get them back so i think what's going to happen Worst case scenario, we are going back to Cheshire anyway in like three weeks time to pick up our puppy but ideally I'd like them back before then so I think we're going to try to meet somewhere in the middle and I'm going to collect them after they've been neutered, fingers crossed, hopefully next week but these poor mice are doomed, this is the third vet appointment that I've had cancelled for all of them so fingers crossed, hopefully next week they get neutered and if I, if they do 
I will update you, but these poor mice. <laughs> We are back and all of the boys are doing really, really good. They've all done really well recovering from their surgeries and it was really strange not having them here. So I'm definitely glad to have them back. And I was of course gonna document the entire process of them post-neuter with their wound recovery and giving them all medication. But of course I've not had to do any of that, which was quite unexpected. So haven't really filmed any of that part of it, but I will quickly show you what the wound looks like. It was a scrotal surgery. So I will show you quickly how that's looking on Sphinx because he's the most hairless, so probably the most easy to kind of see what's going on. So as you can see, or maybe not see because they are quite small, all it is is a tiny scab. Tiny to us, maybe not so much to them, that's kind of scabbing over and healing. All of them are healing really nicely, so in about a week or so, you probably won't know that anything's there. The swelling's gone down, and obviously they've not got balls anymore, so that's what it looks like to neuter a mouse. And of course, a huge thank you to Jody and Melanie and also all of the volunteers at Bacchus Residence for looking after these boys for I think it was around two weeks, um, given the circumstances. Thank you so much for having them and looking after them. And of course, they do have a bunch of mice. I think they took in about 50 mice. Again, pregnant mice, male mice have been neutered. So just in case you can get to Cheshire a lot easier than anywhere else and you are thinking of getting mice, please consider adopting from them because they have got a lot of mice in at the moment that are so, so cute. And of course, a big, big thank you to Struan and Congleton Vets for making this happen and fitting them in. Pretty short notice, actually, so thank you so much. You are a lifesaver and you've done such a good job with the boys. I hope if anyone's watching this and they're kind of on the fence about whether to neuter their mice, their male mice or not, Hopefully this gives you a little bit of confidence. Of course, things can happen because they are so small, but if you have a good vet that knows what they're doing, they're a good age and weight, it can be really successful. And these mice are gonna go on to get adopted and live with other mice, either each other or females. And it's just gonna be so much more of a better quality of life for them. And of course, whilst I'm here thanking everyone, Thank you so, so much to anyone that did donate, either to our PayPal or our fundraiser. Thank you so much because I did have a couple of people that were kind of saying that raising this much money for mice is a waste of money. Personally, I don't think so. I think giving any animal, big or small, a good quality of life is so, so important. So thank you to everyone that did help by donating or sharing that fundraiser. We did raise a bit more than expected and a bit more than needed. So any of the excess money I did donate to Bacchus Residence, they have got so, so many male mice that also need neutering that that's gonna help cover. So I hope you guys don't mind that I went ahead and did that, but thank you so, so much. I feel like I've been filming this video for months and months, probably because I have, but they're all now gonna be adopted or the two that I'm keeping are gonna be introduced to each other and that's gonna be in a separate video. So thank you for sticking with me during this whirlwind of a video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.